Stand and Deliver is the story of real life high school teacher Jaime Escalante and this is another late 80s classic that I watched often with my brother. Uh, we quoted the movie all the time. Of course we had our favorite line from the movie. Fingerman, I heard about you. Are you the finger man? Now today we're going to be trying to find the filming locations for this movie and it should be pretty interesting because there is almost no info online about these filming locations which kind of surprises me but I've definitely got my work cut out for me and this should be fun so let's go see what we can find. And this is our first introduction to Garfield High, the real life high school where Jaime Escalante taught calculus. Unfortunately, that building that we see in the movie, the main building at Garfield High School, that was torn down years ago and replaced with this building. However, it seems like the rest of the school, all the other buildings here, they're original. Nothing else was torn down, just the building that we want to see. So like I said, there's pretty much no information about the filming locations for Stand and Deliver. And really the only thing that you can find online is that they use two different schools. One of them being Garfield High, the real life high school where Jaime Escalante taught. And the other one being Roosevelt High School, which supposedly was Garfield High's crosstown rival. But after doing a lot of investigating, I was able to figure out that they used at least three different schools for the movie, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. Mr. Escalante arrives at Garfield High for his first day of teaching, thinking that he's gonna be teaching computers, but he quickly finds out that Garfield High has no computers. Instead, they throw him into teaching math. He finally arrives in his classroom and finds a bunch of students that don't wanna be there and don't wanna cooperate. Now here's the bad news, his classroom and keep in mind, a lot of the movie takes place in his classroom, along with the halls, the library, pretty much all of the interior shots. 
Those were all filmed at Roosevelt High School in the R building. Uh, right here behind me is Roosevelt High School, and you can probably tell that that's not an original building. It was somewhere right here in this area where the legendary R building used to be, which had a lot of history. But in 2019, they tore down the R building along with a lot of the filming locations for Stand and Deliver. And I've actually only been able to find one location here at Roosevelt where you can still match up a couple of scenes. So after a very long first day of teaching, Mr. Escalante heads to his car to find out that they've not only broken out his window, but they've also stolen his radio. He comes out of those gates over there. Well, probably not those gates, because as you can see, this has all been remodeled. That building wasn't even there at the time, but it was right over here where his car was parked. And we can tell by this lamppost, you can see that right behind him when he's getting into his car. And if you look really closely, the shape of the lamppost is exactly the same. And this is actually not the last time we're gonna see the parking lot here at Roosevelt High School. So he returns to the classroom despite all the problems, and that's when Richie and Fingerman, AKA Angel and Chuko show up and they make his life just a little bit harder. This is Hollenbeck Middle School located right across the street from Roosevelt High. And like I said, I was able to figure out that they used more than Roosevelt and Garfield, and at least a few outdoor scenes were filmed here at Hollenbeck Middle School. So Kimo, as they now call him, is walking with one of his coworkers, talking about teacher stuff. And they were walking right here in between these two buildings. You can see all of those bushes and windows and those pillars. As he gets to the end of the building, he sees Tito leaning up against a wooden wall, talking to a bunch of girls. He's walking right here on this path. And right about here is where that temporary wooden structure was. And you can see that tree and that pipe with that shutoff valve on it. If you look right behind Mr. Escalante, there's the tree and there's that shutoff valve. Also pay attention to those like ridges on the bottom of the wall. You can see them right there. And I can't believe this tree is still here all these years later. Obviously it's gotten a lot bigger and it now blocks that shutoff valve. Kimo then notices a bunch of kids running by and goes to see what's going on. Notice those double doors behind him. Those are those double doors, and to the left is where that chain link fence was. And right out here in the parking lot is where the gang fight is happening. And if you pay really close attention, you can actually see the edge of the wall where there's like a pillar sticking up from the wall. Kimo then notices Angel watching the fight and realizes he's about to run in. Notice those two windows and the pillar. There's the two windows and the pillar. Angel was standing right here. Kimo stops him right before he gets to the fight and he puts him right up against a, uh, like a temporary construction wall. So Angel comes running from over here and then right here where this green pillar is, that's where that construction wall was that he leans him up against. And it's kind of hard to see now because of this maintenance vehicle. But again, look at those ridges on the bottom of the wall and then that door that's how we know we're in the right place. There's the door and those ridges. It looks like they were still building that section. Also, this building back here, look at those windows. You can just barely see those in that scene. And that all takes place right in the front of Hollenbeck Middle School. Right down there in the parking lot is where the gang fight was. A few of Mr. Escalante's students are hanging out at a donut shop talking about how they don't really like his class. And, oh, all right, well, maybe it's a hot dog stand. I don't know. But anyways, they're hanging out talking about how they don't really like his class and they're just not going to do the work. And right here was that donut shop. You can see that building has since been torn down and they're currently building a new structure. But right over here is where they would have been sitting. And the way that we can tell for sure that that's where they were sitting is if we come right over here. And then, like I said, they would have been sitting right here to the left. But if we look right across the street, you can see this building on the corner. In the movie, I believe it was Ben's Burgers. And then right across the street, there's a building with the roll-up door. And then in the background behind it, you can see a building with an arched roof. So right across the street from Ben's Burgers is the building with the roll-up door. And then off in the distance, that building with the arched roof. And as they're sitting there talking, one of Claudia's boyfriends pulls up and behind him you can see the projects. You can see it really well when she's walking to the car. 
Now that's the driveway that he pulls up in front of, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because they're sitting over here. So uh, the donut shop would have been in between them, but that's definitely the driveway. You can tell by the buildings across the street. If we come over here, you can see that's the building that you see behind him. And you can even see that tree right there that slants to the right. There's the building and there's that tree. So that's the spot. Think she's so hot just because she dates gabachos. And what's really crazy about this location for me is my entire life, my dad worked right down the street, right around that corner. You can actually see his building sticking out right there. So I grew up coming to this area and I'm almost 100% sure that we came to this donut shop a couple of times. I just had no idea it was the one from the movie. Chuko and Angel head out for the night to cruise around and cause some trouble. We see them get into the car, and then as they're coming down the street, Angel throws a bottle at this building on the corner because he must really hate that building. It obviously did him wrong at some point in his life. They were coming down Anderson Street, and this building right here on the corner is the one that Angel throws the bottle at. They then make a left onto First Street and head over the First Street Bridge towards downtown Los Angeles. Now this view is a lot different than the one that we see in the movie, mostly the fact that there's now train tracks going over the first street bridge. After a night of cruising around and causing some trouble, Chuko drops Angel off at school, and you can see this building behind him, along with that church steeple off in the distance. Here's that building, and there's that church steeple. Now this is at Garfield High, on the side of the school, near the football field. And I think it's pretty amazing that all these years later, this area looks the same. There's a really quick scene with some kids diving into a pool, and that scene is really just to let us know that it's summertime and it's hot. That scene was filmed here at this community pool, and they still have one diving board, however that lifeguard tower is now gone. Those houses across the street, however, those can be seen when the kid is jumping into the pool along with those no diving signs on the fence, which I thought was really strange since they have diving boards. Another thing that matches up is this streak that runs alongside the park and goes slightly uphill and has grass that slants down towards the pool. Now again, that scene was just to remind us that it's hot outside so that when we see chemo students taking summer school, we know just how miserable they are. Now since they showed the pool right before they showed this scene, I always assumed that they were taking summer school in the locker room at the community pool. Now, I don't know if that's actually what they were implying or why they would do that. I don't know if that's a thing, but would that mean that they're supposed to be inside this building? However, I don't really think they would film that scene inside this building. That was most likely filmed at one of the schools. It's a new school year, and once again, Mr. Escalante is walking with his colleague, talking about teacher stuff, when suddenly from up above, somebody throws a chair and a trash can at him. I noticed this set of windows on the building. That'll give you an idea of where they're standing. We're back at Hollenbeck Middle School, and there's that set of windows, so they were standing right here in front of me. Mr. Escalante spots the people who threw the stuff at him, and he takes off after him. He goes running down this way, he comes right down here and he rounds the corner and he spots the three gang members coming down this staircase and they then take off. And they go running up this hill and my favorite is the last guy who swings the chain around his head before he then runs away. This is the hill they run up, it's now missing that tree. And the three tough gang members are still running away from the elderly school teacher. And they were coming down this path. And as they move past the building, notice that drinking fountain. There it is. They then head down to the end of the building and they round the corner, knocking over one of Mr. Escalante's students. And they run down the hill and hop the fence Right here is where Mr. Escalante was standing, watching them run down the hill. I came outside of the school on the other side to show you. Right up there is where he was standing. He watches them run down this hill and hop the fence. And that cage right down there, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but you can see that as they're running down the hill. There, you can see it right there. And then as they hop the fence, 
you get a pretty good shot of those houses across the street, which are now pretty well covered, but if you look closely, you can still match them up. Pancho tells Mr. Escalante that he's not returning to his class. He's dropping out to become a mechanic. That night, they go for a drive in Pancho's car, and at the last minute, Kimo asks Pancho if he should go left or right. Of course, this is just a big lesson about making sure you choose the right path in life. So they were coming down 1st Street, and right here in the intersection, there used to be a fork in the road that would take you onto 1st or Pleasant Avenue. And in the movie, they cut to the right and they go down Pleasant Avenue, which is no longer here because this is now where Mariachi Plaza is. So because Mr. Escalante's students are trying to learn calculus and be ready for the big test, they're working extra hard and showing up at school before anybody, and the custodian has to let them in. We see him walk right here past these shutoff valves, and you can see all those vents on that wall back there. And right here in front of this gate is where Lupe and Pancho are waiting to come inside the school. And this is at Garfield High on the side of the school, not too far from that area where Angel gets dropped off a bit earlier in the movie. And this is another area that I'm happy to say looks really similar to how it did in the movie. I don't really see too many changes here. So along with teaching his regular class and making appearances at junior highs, and he volunteers to teach night school for free. He's also teaching adult school for free. Now, this is the adult school that he was teaching at. Now, this is also at Garfield High. And this building looks exactly like it did in the movie with the exception of that neon sign. I wish it still had the neon adult school sign, but other than that, it looks exactly the same. Now again, since they show that building, you would assume that that's where he's teaching class, but you can tell he's in a regular classroom, and when he's having the heart attack, he's now back in the R building at Roosevelt. You can see this is the backside of the adult school building. It doesn't attach to the main school, and it's definitely only one story, no stairs for him to come falling down. And also, in real life, it wasn't a heart attack that he had. Uh, I believe it was a gallbladder flare-up. So after the kids take the big test, they all go to the beach and run into the ocean to blow off some steam and release all that tension that they had built up. That is, except, of course, for Angel. He doesn't want to get his khakis and his Pendleton wet. Angel was standing somewhere right about here on the beach. You can see all of these buildings behind him, along with this hillside. So all of his classmates continue to taunt him until finally he gives in and strips off all of his clothes and he goes running towards the ocean. And when he does, you can also see this taller building. Angel finally lets loose and runs and jumps into the ocean and has a good time with all of his classmates. Now this next location might be one of the craziest locations I've ever found and I'll explain why. So Pancho's at his house, he's working on his car, he's underneath it, and he sees the mail being delivered, and he realizes that his test results are probably in that mailbox. So he gets up and he walks over and he gets the mail. So my wife and I are trying to figure out where Pancho's house is, and we're really frustrated because there's just not a lot of clues, and we're about to give up. And I jokingly say to my wife, wait a minute, when he gets the mail out of the mailbox, it has his address on the test results. And she kind of, you know, gives me a look because it's ridiculous to think that they would use the real address on that piece of mail. It's one thing when you see the address on a house, but to actually put it on a piece of mail in the movie, it just doesn't make any sense. But I was desperate and I had nothing else. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to Google that address and see what comes up. And sure enough, they used the real address on that piece of mail. Now that's not even the crazy part. When Pancho's getting up from underneath his car, you can see a truck parked right behind his car. Or right behind me. That's Pancho's house. There's that truck. It's been parked in the same spot for more than 30 years. I mean, when we saw the house on Google, we couldn't believe it. But then we noticed a truck in the driveway and we zoomed in and we were floored when we realized it was the same truck that you see in the movie. But so anyways, right there, that's where Pancho's car was, right in front of the truck. Right there at the end of the driveway is where the mailbox was. And you do see this house right here pretty well when Pancho's walking back up the driveway. I don't believe that's supposed to be his house. I think that's the neighbor's house. 
Mr. Escalante and his students get together and have a meeting on the bleachers at Garfield High after he receives a letter telling him that it's believed that all of his students cheated on the test. Now, a lot's changed out here, but you can see this building behind the students in a couple of different shots. All of the students are gathered around Mr. Escalante as he reads the letter. Now, I don't know if these are the same bleachers that we see in the movie. I know definitely that railing around the bleachers has been changed. Anna and Javier are walking across the football field talking about whether or not they think all of their classmates cheated on the test. That was filmed here at Garfield High. You can see those stairs in the background behind them, along with these buildings. As they continue walking, the camera pans slightly to the right, and you can see that they're walking underneath the goalpost, and you can also see another building behind them. There's the goalpost. There's currently a soccer goal in front of it, and here's that other building. Pancho has a little meltdown when he starts having car problems because if he would have just dropped out and got a job, he could have had a new car by now. Behind him, you can see the building with the Garfield High logo on it. That was filmed right here behind Garfield High School. That building is currently blocked by this fence because they're doing construction back here. And a lot has changed back here since they made the movie, but thanks to that building, that's how we know where this scene was shot. Chuko and Angel are once again cruising around, doing nothing, getting into trouble. And that's when a cop car pulls up next to him, and Angel decides to mess with the cops. Of course, no surprise, they tell him to pull over, and they end up stopping him next to a bridge and harassing him. And it was somewhere right out here in the dirt where the cops are messing with Chuko and Angel. You can see the first street bridge behind them. Their cars would have been over here, and the camera would have been somewhere over here. There's now a fence. I think they use this as some kind of a storage area now, but there's a shot where you can see the first street bridge on the left side. You can see a building on the other side of the LA River that's since been torn down. And this is pretty much the shot. You just can't see uh, the dirt in front of me where their cars are parked because I can't get far enough back because of that fence. After the cops leave, Chuko's obviously angry and he shoves Angel down to the ground. And as Angel's walking away, you can see some arches underneath the bridge behind Chuko, you can see there's some of those arches right here and there's also some here that have since been covered up i think because of the storage area i'm pretty sure those are the arches you see in the movie and then we get a shot of angel walking away from the bridge as Chuko gets into his car and drives away and he makes a left underneath the bridge and the camera would have been right about here but again because of that gate and the storage container you can no longer see the bridge and we can't really get that same shot Mr. Escalante is leaving the school when he looks up and notices his car is gone. That was filmed at Roosevelt High. This is the same area that we see earlier in the movie. And again, it looks a bit different because things have been remodeled. You can see some of the houses across the street when he's trying to figure out where his car is. And that's when his co-worker pulls up. There's those houses across the street. The view is a bit blocked now by trees. And when he approaches his co-worker to talk to him, the camera looks in the other direction and you can see this building behind him. And I do believe that this is one of the few original buildings remaining here at Roosevelt. Mr. Escalante walks out of the parking lot and you can see some more houses across the street. Again, the view is blocked by these trees. But if we just step to the side a bit, you can get a better view of those houses and you can see that they look just like they did more than 30 years ago. Mr. Escalante is now walking all the way home. We see him walk past a freeway and you can see a sign for the 5 Freeway and Vignes Street. He was walking along Soto Street near the intersection of Soto and Marengo and that freeway sign has since changed a bit. And of course we learn a bit later that they didn't steal his car, they just borrowed it for a bit so they could fix it up for him. Mr. Escalante heads downtown to talk to Pearson and Ramirez and the building that he goes to is the Hall of Justice in downtown LA and the camera is shooting from right here on Hill Street and amazingly the view from Hill Street is exactly the same as it was in the movie more than 30 years ago. Of course just that palm tree has gotten a lot taller. So all of Mr. Escalante's students end up returning to retake the test and at the end of the movie he finds out that every single one of them passes for the second time.
We then see Jaime Escalante walk down the hall and leave the school. And this is on the second floor of the R building at Roosevelt High School. This is the same hall where his classroom was located and we see him and Angel walking down this hall earlier in the movie. Well, that is gonna do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.